Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at people who appeared on reality TV shows, some contestants to staff in the show who took their own lives and committed suicide. We won't be covering every case worldwide, but we'll attempt to cover as many cases worldwide as we can and holistically analyse each case. And I want to be clear. We are not stating that these shows were the reasons behind the suicides, but we want to explore if the shows could have done more, pay homage to the victims, and see what we can learn with an analysis at the end. And please don't put the onus on those who have passed away. You cannot relate to them until you have walked a mile in their shoes. And also, please remember that if you need help, help is always there for you. 365 days a year, 24-7. If you're in the UK, call Samaritans on 11 61 23. If you're in Australia, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. If you're in the United States of America, call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline on 988. And if you're a Spanish speaker, the Nacional de Prevención de Suicidio is available on 188 if your country hasn't been listed, there are numerous resources, including suicide hotlines, available to you. And don't forget that the world would be so much worse without you. And you cannot imagine the amazing things that you will achieve in the future. And with that, let's get into it. The first suicide related to a reality TV show was that of Swedish citizen Sinisa Savijar, who was on the first season of Expedition Robinson, which aired in Sweden on SVT, commencing on the 13th of September 1997, with the series made into many other versions worldwide, including Survivor. The series was filmed between May and June 1997 in Babi Tengar, Malaysia. Similarly to Survivor on Expedition Robinson, teams were divided into the South Team, Green, and North Team, Blue. Sinisar Savijar was 34 years old and lived in Norrköping, Sweden. However, he was originally from what was then Yugoslavia and is now Bosnia and Herzegovina, having escaped with his wife. He loved sport, particularly basketball, and applied himself to learning Swedish. In spring 1997, he applied to be on Expedition Robinson, with the possibility of winning 500,000 Swedish krona. In his application, he described himself as peaceful, not subject to moods, and very active. Friends said that his selection made him as happy as a child. However, when he arrived in Malaysia, he was quickly ostracized by other contestants. Toy S. Boris Jorn, a reporter at Afton Bladet, interviewed Savis Shah on his first day, noting that he was shy, but had a love for sport and was positive about the experience. However, when Boris John interviewed him after three days, he noted that he completely changed, stating that he couldn't take it, the physical conditions, the pressure of finding his place in the group, and the risk of being voted off. He struggled to make friends and was described by eventual winner Martin Mellon as a loner who didn't get on well with people, with Mellon stating, If you are a refugee and you don't know the language and the culture, well, you're not in the group. You're different. With the first task won by the North team, Savisjar was voted out on the fourth day with four votes, a majority. However, Savisjar would never see the show air. Returning home on the 11th of July 1997, he left his home, stepped to into the path of a speeding commuter train and committed suicide. But was the show to blame? Well, columnists said that the show was indicative of fascism and like Lord of the Flies, with Savisjar later regretting being on the show and his family said that he never got over the rejection of being voted off first. His wife also blamed the show. However, SVT said that Savisjar's suicide was as a result of his experience in the Yugoslavian War. Senior producer of SVT's light entertainment department, Gunila Nilaz, said that it was never proven that the reason for the suicide of Savisjar was Expedition Robinson. However, based on what his family said, you can't help but to feel differently. His family elected not to sue SVT. The Contender was an American reality TV show created by Mark Burnett, with each season following a group of middleweight boxers as they competed in an elimination-style competition, with their lives outside of a ring, including their relationships and families, shown within the show. Teams were split between the East Coast and the West Coast. The winner would win one million US dollars. Critically, boxers were unable to fight if they lost until the show's finale had aired, with contestants paid 800 bucks a week if they were knocked out. 
The series began on the 7th of March 2005 and was broadcast on NBC, but costing $2 million it was a commercial flop with ESPN picking up the show for two series between 2006 and 2007 before NBC Sports Network broadcast the show from 2008 until 2009 when it was cancelled, last airing on the 7th of January 2009. The show briefly returned to premium cable and satellite TV channel Epix, now known as MGM Plus, airing from the 24th of August 2018 until the 9th of November 2018 before being cancelled. In the first series, presented by Sugar Ray Leonard and Sylvester Stallone, professional boxer Najai Turpin from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania participated. Turpin was born on the 19th of December 1981, had a girlfriend Angela Chappell with the relationship strained at the time and a two-year-old daughter Anya. A professional boxer, Turpin had a good fighting record. He'd fought in 14 matches, won 13, 9 of which were by knockout, and had lost one match. He decided to participate in the first series of a contender, and in his first match was pitted against Sergio Mora, nicknamed the Latin Snake, who was 7 inches taller than Turpin, and at the time had a 12-0 record as a professional boxer. Mora would go on to win the show. He defeated Turpin, who returned to Philadelphia. Unable to contractually fight, Turpin gained weight and, according to his sister, became slightly overweight and simultaneously, to survive, went back to his day job of cleaning fish. According to his manager, Percy Custis, he was frustrated and wanted to fight. Before the show aired, Turpin committed suicide in his car in the car park of his gym with his girlfriend and daughter in his car, but was the contender to blame for Turpin's suicide? Well, it was actually judged to be a contributing factor even though the show had not aired. Turpin's reason for committing suicide was never determined, however it was believed that the fact that he was unable to fight and that he was beaten by Morga contributed to his low self-esteem. He was also in an ongoing custody battle for his daughter. The contender did air on NBC despite Turpin's suicide, however in his memory producers set up a trust fund for his daughter, with a special tribute to Turpin, and the episode he fought in was dedicated to him, while contestant Ishe Oluwa Ali Smith had Turpin's initials imprinted on his shorts during a match. Extreme Makeover was an American reality TV show involving men and women undergoing extreme makeovers, including plastic surgery, exercise regimens, hairdressing and wardrobing. Each episode ended with their family and friends seeing the results to their amazement. It began airing on the 11th of December 2002 on ABC and ceased airing after four seasons on the 16th of July 2007. In late 2003, Delise McGee, pictured of Texas, applied to be on the show. In January 2004, she and her family were flown to Los Angeles, California to be interviewed by producers. When asked about McGee, they only gave positive reactions and comments, while producers repeatedly encouraged her family to say negative things, which her family proceeded to do. Denise McGee, in the room opposite, heard their comments and was shocked. This was designed to contrast her family's reactions to when the makeover had been completed. The night before the surgery, however, McGee was informed that her surgery was cancelled, as the estimated recovery time did not fit into the filming schedule. After the surgery was cancelled, her sister, Kelly, suffered from guilt for making negative comments about her sister and died from an intentional drug overdose in May 2004. Delise McGee sued for emotional damages according to $1 million where the case settled out of court. The case made national headlines and is seen as a contributing factor to the show's cancellation. Karina Stevenson was a 17-year-old girl from Branton in South Yorkshire in the United Kingdom who participated in her family on the show The Colony. The Colony was a reality TV show where modern families, one from the United Kingdom, the Stevens, one from Ireland, the Hurleys, one from Australia, the Hockney, and a number of indigenous families, the Donovans, Costelloers, and Walkers, attempted to survive in the conditions of New South Wales during the period of 1795 until 1815 as convicts, free settlers, and indigenous Australians. The show was filmed in the Hawkesbury region of New South Wales. The series was broadcast on SBS in Australia, RTE in the Republic of Ireland, and the History Channel in the United Kingdom. Filmed in 2004 over four months and consisting of six episodes, it was not released until the 26th of January 2005 in Australia, where it first aired, and while nominated for the Most Outstanding Documentary Series in the Logie Awards of 2006, it was considered a failure and not renewed. It's worth noting that the show's website said that the participants were challenged by hunger, illness, extreme weather, and homesickness. 
The English family consisted of John Stevenson, aged 41, Liz Stevenson, aged 37, Karina Stevenson, aged 16, and Tyler Stevenson, aged 12. Upon returning to South Yorkshire on Thursday, the 19th of May 2005, Karina Stevenson told her family that she was going on a bike ride and subsequently reported missing when she did not return. On Saturday, the 21st of May, she was found dead in Woodland near her home, having committed suicide, with her death not treated as suspicious. But it's worth noting that the show wasn't to commence airing in the UK until the 6th of June 2005 and producers of the show met with the Stevenson family who agreed that it could still be aired by September when the inquest into Stevenson's death was carried out. However, it had aired in Australia and at the time was airing on RTE in the Republic of Ireland. Participant Richard Ginman told The Guardian that he was ready to quit after two days, noting that there were tensions between the families, but the children and teenage colonists were unaffected by the tensions of the adults. Equally, producers noted that families could have returned at any time had they not been happy. Simultaneously, Stevenson had recently come out as a homosexual, but was described as happy in days prior and was described by her head teacher as gregarious, mature, personable and a thoughtful person. After her death, it was found that Stevenson had been googling suicide websites and her mother believed that she would still be alive if she had not had access to the websites glorifying suicide, telling ITV News, it's horrendous. Some of the things on there that I have logged on to, I've had to walk away. I felt physically sick. Was Stevens' death ruled a suicide? Could the colony be blamed for her death? Based on the information that we have, probably not. If you're a 90s kid or an early millennial, odds are that the theme songs to your local version of Idol is ingrained in your head. One of the most famous and successful singing competitions in history, American Idol was broadcast on Fox on the 11th of June 2002 until the 7th of April 2016, before it was revived by ABC in 2018 and has been broadcast ever since the 11th of March 2018. While on Fox, it frequently enjoyed ratings above 30 million, with the highest ranked episode, the first show of the sixth season broadcast on the 16th of January 2007, getting a whopping 37.44 million viewers. On season 5, the judges were Paula Abdul, Simon Cowell and Randy Jackson, and aired on Fox on the 17th of January 2006 until the 24th of May 2006. One of the contestants, contestant number 55,896, was Paula Goodspeed, based in Los Angeles, California. Goodspeed, a single lesbian, was a fan of Abdul, having changed her name to Paula at 16, as well as modelling her singing and appearance after her. Abdul allegedly objected to Goodspeed appearing, but executive producers Nigel Lithgow and Ken Warwick denied being aware of her concerns, stating that had they been aware, they would not have allowed Goodspeed to audition. She appeared on the show auditioning in Austin, Texas. In an interview with host Ryan Seacrest, she stated, I really like Paula Abdul a lot. She's very cool. I'm a really big fan. I made life-size drawings of Paula. I've been drawing ever since I was a little kid. And my first drawing was of Paula Abdul. Goodspeed was a terrible singer. The 27-year-old was voted a no by all judges, automatically eliminating her after her performance of Proud Mary by Tina Turner. Abdul said that she was speechless. Jackson noted, That was terrible. What was that? Cal was most critical of Goodspeed, attacking her braces, noting, I don't think any artist on earth can sing with that much metal in your mouth anyway. You have so much metal in your mouth. That's like a bridge. An optimistic Goodspeed vowed, It's not over. I'm not going to stop singing. She maintained her infatuation with Abdul despite being ridiculed in her audition, and she never got over the rejection. In the years after her audition, her mental health deteriorated. She lived alone in Thousand Oaks, California, but a family member had to move in to take care of her. Her car had the number plate ABLLV, and she had a photo of Abdul hanging from her rearview mirror. On her MySpace page, she posted a seductive photo of Abdul with her open mouth and tongue exposed below the words, My Secret Crush, Shh. In 2007, she overdosed in her car outside Abdul's home, but survived. In June 2008, the Ventura County Sheriff's Office had been asked by the LAPD to check her apartment after the police became concerned that she might be suicidal. On the 11th of November 2008, she was reported missing by her relatives who called the Ventura County Sheriff's Department at 3pm. She had not been seen since the 10th of November. 
She was found dead the same day, having committed suicide in her car parked a few doors down from Abdul's Los Angeles home, having overdosed on prescription pills. CDs and pictures of Abdul's were found in her car. Abdul was filming American Idol at the time and was told by representatives of Fox. She released a statement stating, I'm deeply shocked and saddened at what transpired yesterday. My heart and prayers go out to her family. Pirate Master was a CBS TV show created by Mark Burnett and hosted by Australian Cameron Daddo. Filmed in Dominica, the show saw 16 modern-day pirates on a quest for a gold treasure valued at $1 million. Teams were divided by Black Crew and Red Crew. The show was a ratings bomb and drew less than 7 million viewers on its opening episode that aired on the 31st of May 2007. Desperate to get rid of this ratings bomb, after 8 episodes, the remaining 6 episodes were moved from CBS to CBS's then broadband video channel, CBS Intertube. One of those competing was 35-year-old Cheryl Kozewick of Sparks, Nevada. She was the fourth removed from the show. However, while filming the show, the distance caused friction for her and her boyfriend, 26-year-old heavy machinery operator Ryan O'Neill, who committed suicide in May 2007. Kozawix wrote on the MySpace page of contestant Nessa Nimir on the 28th of June 2007, Truthfully, I've lost the strong Cheryl and I'm just floating around lost. And this frickin' show doesn't help because it was such a contention between Ryan and I. And plus it's not getting good reviews. She also suggested that the pair had planned a trip together in August 2007. On her own MySpace page, she wrote that she used it to keep in contact with the dear friends and family of the love of my life, Ryan O'Neill, who just recently passed away. On the 27th of July 2007 on MySpace, she wrote, Through thick and thin, my friends, family and co-workers have been there for me, even when I refused their help and support. Thank you so much for the support and love. I will forever and always be thankful. Until we meet again. On the same day, she committed suicide in her own home. The official manager of Pirate Masters MySpace page stated, My deepest sympathies to Cheryl's family and friends. My thoughts and prayers are with them during this difficult time. Cheryl, you will be loved and missed by many, but never forgotten. On the show's Facebook page, it was stated, She was a strong woman, a tough competitor, and will be missed. Fellow contestants noted their sadness with Jocelyn Joy McKelvin of West Columbia, South Carolina, noting on MySpace, Cheryl, I am hurting. Hurting so bad because there was so much more I wanted to tell you and do with you. I will always remember our laughs, our cries, and every single moment I will cherish it always. Sadly, based on her MySpace entries, it seems that Coruswick blamed Pirate Master for her relationship disintegration and O'Neill's suicide, which seems to have been laid a motivation in herself taking her own life. The show continued to air in Australia on Channel 10 on Sunday afternoons, the UK on Sky Free on Saturday mornings, and CBS on Intertube. The final episode paid respect to her death with a black screen dedication before the final credits of a show that CBS and Burnett would rather have forgotten. Super Nanny was an American version of a British series of the same name, featuring British nanny Joe Frost. The show aired on ABC from the 17th of January 2005 until the 11th of March 2011, and briefly returned to Lifetime for one season from the 1st of June 2020 until the 22nd of September 2020. During the fifth episode of the fourth season, Frost went to help the Tell family, with Scott Tell, 36 years old and divorced, with full custody of his two sons, 11-year-old Lane and 5-year-old Tate, and he lived in Georgetown, Kentucky. During the show, he said that their mother had abandoned them, and he was abused throughout his childhood, and as a result, he would not discipline his kids. The episode was filmed in August 2007. However, on the 4th of July 2008, Scott Tell committed suicide by a self-inflicted gunshot wound while at the cemetery, where his father was buried, while brandishing a gun, standing over his father's grave, and talking to police on a cell phone. The show only aired once on ABC and was not available on Hulu to download, and hence we only have screenshots from the episode. Hell's Kitchen is hosted by Gordon Ramsay and features two teams of chefs competing through a series of challenges for a job as head chef at a restaurant. It is a spin-off of a British version that has been broadcast since the 30th of May 2005 on Fox. The second season saw 12 contestants competing 
across 11 episodes, with the winner getting the role of executive chef at the restaurant at Red Rock Resort Spa and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, with the winner earning a salary of $250,000 a year. One of the contestants was 39-year-old personal chef Rachel Brown of Dallas, Texas, a member of the LGBTQIA community. She noted that she was proud to be a redneck. Brown did rather well and placed seventh. She told a local newspaper in Dallas that she did not regret going on the show. At the age of 41, however, on the 9th of May 2007, four days after her 41st birthday, she committed suicide at her home through a self-inflicted gunshot wound. She gave her ashes to her girlfriend. Kitchen Nightmares is the US version of Kitchen Nightmares, whereby Gordon Ramsay is invited by the owners of a failing restaurant to spend a week in an attempt to revive the business. The show premiered on Fox on the 19th of September 2007, with the last episode airing on the 12th of September 2014. The ninth episode of the first season saw Ramsay head to Italian restaurant Campania in Fairlawn, New Jersey to help owner Joseph Semiglia. During the episode, Ramsey infamously screamed to Camiglia, Your business is about to fucking swim down the Hudson, referring to the financial state of a restaurant which had lost $120,000 in 18 months, with $80,000 having to be paid to purveyors. Camiglia was a self-taught chef and married to his wife Melissa with three sons, Evelyn, Michael and Nicholas. The restaurant picked up in business after Ramsey left and Camiglia won Chef Central's Bergen Ultimate Chef Competition in 2008 and was runner-up in 2009. By 2010, Semiquilla's personal life was a disaster. In July 2010, he was arrested for possession of cocaine, having had a bad reaction while taking it. And he had a side mistress, pastry chef Jessica Marotta. By this stage, he had separated from Melissa, but no paperwork was filed. On the 20th of September 2010, he sold the restaurant to Campania Holding Corp. On the 28th of September 2010, he jumped off the George Washington Bridge into the Hudson River, committing suicide. The mainstream media chastised Ramsey, drawing a link to what Ramsey had said about his business and how he died. However, his family refused to draw a link between Ramsey and his suicide with his sister Danielle Wynn, telling CBS News he really liked Gordon and the show was great. The show was also great for business. It helped tremendously. There were no hard feelings at all from our family to Gordon Ramsey, who was a wonderful man. His behaviour on the show was played up for the cameras. His family stated on Facebook, The family of Joe Sanquilla would like to thank all of the friends that have sent their condolences. For anyone who wishes to do so, the family would appreciate that in lieu of flowers, a financial donation be made to Joe's family to help provide for Joe's wife Melissa and their three sons. Despite the media noting that this meant that the business had not been a success after Ramsey left, the family noted that this financial donation was to provide a nest egg for his children. Former president of the American Academy of Suicidology, Dr. Robert Utif, took the slack off Ramsey, telling CBS News, My guess is that both of these people, referring to Sengilia and Brown, had major problems before appearing on the show. I would almost bet that the show itself could not be held responsible. I would say that the show might have tripped off something else that was going on in their lives. The restaurant closed in January 2011 with Italian restaurant Sage opening up in its place in March 2012 and it remains open until this day. Paradise Hotel saw a group of singles paired off into couples and trying to live in a hotel together. The first season aired from the 18th of June 2003 until the 1st of October 2003 on Fox. The second series aired on Fox Reality Channel and My Network TV and was broadcast on the 4th of February 2008 until the 26th of May 2008, with a final series airing for six episodes from the 9th of May 2019 until the 6th of June 2019 on Fox before being cancelled. The second series was filmed in late 2007, however, contestant Nathan Clutter a 26-year-old sales manager of Daneville, Illinois, who worked in Phoenix, Arizona, had committed suicide on the 12th of October 2007, having jumped off an Altel cellular tower in Amarillo, Texas. After consulting his family, it was agreed that MyTV Network and Fox Reality could continue to air the second series of Paradise Hotel with cutless scenes included. Megan Wants a Millionaire saw 17 wealthy single men compete for the love of former Rock of Love contestant Megan Hussaman 
Each man had a net worth of over $1 million, hence the title. The show was broadcast from the 2nd of August 2009 on VH1, but would cease airing on the 16th of August. But why? Well, one of the contestants competing on the show was Ryan Jenkins. Jenkins was a real estate investor living in California, however initially from Canada. His net worth was $2.5 million. After competing on Megan Wants a Millionaire, he met Jasmine Fiore at a Las Vegas casino on the 16th of March 2009. Fiore was of Booney Dune, California and a swimsuit model. Two days later, on the 18th of March 2009, the pair married at a little white wedding chapel on the Las Vegas Strip. In June 2009, in Clark County, Nevada, he was charged with battery constituting domestic violence for hitting Fiore on the arm. The pair would reconcile and travel to San Diego, California for a poker game. On the 13th of August 2009, they checked into L'Aubergere Hotel in Del Mar, San Diego. The couple was seen leaving the Del Mar Hilton, where the poker tournament took place, and then seen at the Ivy Hotel before Jenkins was seen returning to L'Aubergere Hotel alone at 4.30am on the 14th of August 2009. Fiora's body was found badly beaten and crushed with her teeth and fingers removed, chucked inside a suitcase in a dumpster alley in Duena Park, California. Her body was identified using the serial numbers on her breast implants on the 18th of August 2009. Jenkins had killed her. Jenkins reported Fiore missing at 8.55pm on the 15th of August 2009 and on the 16th of August 2009 left for Los Angeles, California. On the 17th of August 2009, when contacted by police, he told police that he was in Utah and heading up to Canada to resolve immigration issues. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police believe that he entered Canada between the 19th and 20th of August 2009. On the 20th of August 2009, he was charged with Fiorge's murder and an arrest warrant was issued, with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police searching for him. At about 6pm on the 20th of August, he checked in with his half-sister, Elena Jenkins, into the Thunderbird Hotel in Hope, British Columbia, Canada. With the couple having not checked out at 11.30am on the 23rd of August, the motel manager and his nephew went to check on the room and it was found that Jenkins had committed suicide, having hung himself from a clothes rack by a belt. This led to VHS1 cancelling Megan Wants a Millionaire with no further episodes ever airing. However, it was later revealed that two years earlier, Jenkins had been convicted of assaulting a woman in Calgary, Canada. This had not been disclosed to VH1 or the producers of Megan Wants a Millionaire, 51 Minds. 51 Minds said that they would not have allowed Jenkins on the show if they had known about the 2007 incident. Simone Chiresa Battle was born on the 17th of June 1989 in Los Angeles, California. Since 2006, she had small bit parts in TV shows including Zoe 101 and Everybody Hates Chris. She also started singing, releasing her first single Rain in 2008, followed by Just a Boy in 2009 and Material Girl in 2009 as well as He Likes a Boy. The songs didn't chart anywhere. In 2011, she appeared on the first season of The X Factor, broadcast on Fox on the 21st of September 2011 until the 22nd of December 2011. Based on The X Factor UK, the show saw solo artists and groups drawn from public auditions compete for public votes, with the winner getting a contract with creator and judge Simon Cowell's record label, Psycho Music, worth $5 million in the first and second season and $1 million in the third and final season of the US franchise, with the show last airing on Fox on the 19th of December 2013. Battle sang When I Grow Up by the Pussycat Dolls and received three yeses from the judges, making it through to boot camp, where she was mentored by Cal, becoming one of the 32 finalists in the girls' category. Making it to the top 17, she was eliminated during the first week by Cal. However, her singing career continued as part of American group GRL. The band's first song was Vacation, which made it to number 97 in the Republic of Korea. The band then released Show Me What You Got, before releasing Wild Wild Love with Pitbull, making it to number 30 in the United States of America, number 10 in Australia, number 30 in the Republic of Ireland, 25 in New Zealand, 22 in Canada, 90 in France, and 6 in the United Kingdom, with an Aria Platinum in Australia and Music Canada Platinum. 
Her most successful and final single as part of GRL was Ugly Heart, released in 2014. The song did not have a lot of success in the US at number 107, but peaked at number 2 in Australia and the Republic of Ireland, number 3 in New Zealand, and number 11 in the United Kingdom with four Platinum ARIA certifications, a Silver BPI classification by the British Phonographic Industry and Silver Platinum for Recorded Music NZ. To anyone looking in, 25-year-old Battle had found immense success and debatably more success than any contestant on the first season of The X Factor. However, she experienced financial difficulties manifesting into depression as well as frustration, but GRL had not found mainstream success in the US, despite incredible overseas success, and on the 5th of September 2014, the 25-year-old committed suicide in her West Hollywood home. Tributes flowed from singers and entertainers, including Simon Cowell, with GRL releasing their single Lighthouse as a tribute to battle. The Voice is one of the most successful reality TV shows in history, having been broadcast on NBC since the 26th of April 2011 for 22 seasons. The show, based on the Dutch version The Voice of Holland, aims to find unsigned singing talent with four vocal coaches working with contestants and the winner receiving 100,000 US dollars and a record deal with Universal Musical Group. Season 8 featured coaches Adam Levine, Farrell Williams, Christina Aguilera and Blake Shelton. Anthony Riley was aged 27 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and a street performer. However, he had a secret producers at the time did not know about. He was a drug addict. He had an incredibly difficult life with his mother in and out of prison throughout his life and his mother was a crack addict. He was also bullied in school and came out as gay in 2014. He sang in his first episode to feature the second episode, I Got You, I Feel Good, with all four judges turning their chairs and Riley elected to go with Pharrell as a coach. In episode 7 he sang Get Ready and won the battle against Travis Airwing and advanced to the knockouts. However, Riley abruptly left the show to enter a two-week rehab program for substance abuse, flown back by producers of The Voice to Philadelphia and entering Clarity Way a rehab facility in Hanover, Pennsylvania. He insisted the producers were supportive and NBC paid for his time at Clarity Way. However, Riley did not get any better and despite recording what was seen as the best music of his life, he was skipping doctor's appointments, went on drug binges and suffered from immense depression. Friends began to believe that he had schizophrenia and he refused to get a cell phone stating that the Illuminati were going to kill him and that people were spying on him. On the 5th of June 2015, he took his own life by hanging with his funeral service held at the Second Nazareth Missionary Church in Point Breeze, with about 50 people attending. However, it's not just for contestants who experience psychological difficulties. Charlotte Dawson was born on the 8th of April 1966 in Auckland, New Zealand. Leaving school at 16, she became a model in Europe and joined Ford Models in New York City in the United States of America. She then moved to Australia and in 1997 became a beauty and fashion director for Women's Day before becoming style editor for New Idea magazine. Doing occasional bits on Australian TV, including Good Morning Australia, in 1999 she married swimmer Scott Miller, who won bronze and silver at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Falling pregnant, Miller didn't want Dawson to have the child and she got an abortion. According to Dawson, this started her depression. In 2002, she returned to her native New Zealand and became host of TVNZ's House Life as well as Prime's Getaway and Charlotte's List. Returning to Australia from season 3 in 2007 to season 8 in 2013, she was a judge on Fox 8's Australia's Next Top Model. She also hosted The Contender Australia, a reality TV show following boxers' personal lives and relationships, which took place in the super middleweight division. But the show was not successful. It ran on Fox 8 from the 2nd of November 2009 until the 11th of January 2010 before being cancelled after one season. However, for her work on Australia's Next Top Model, she was frequently battling 
Twitter trolls and cyber bullies attempting suicide in 2012. She became an ambassador for the anti-cyber bullying initiative Community Brave and did a report on the 26th of October 2012 on 7 News broadcast on Channel 7 on cyber bullying. She also took on a role as an anti-bullying ambassador for the National Rugby League, the NRL. However, she was criticised of double standards due to her aggressive behaviour towards models on Australia's Next Top Model. 3AW's Peter Ford, a radio station broadcast in Victoria, stated the problem of Charlotte taking on this cause is her act is about abusing people and putting them down, so it becomes a bit murky as to why she has become a champion of this particular cause. On the 21st of February 2014, Dawson stopped updating her Twitter and Instagram, with friends becoming concerned. She spent hours defending herself online on the 20th and 21st of February 2014 on Twitter and Instagram. Her last message on Twitter at 2.07am on the 21st of February 2014 was her holding tablets, stating, You win, X. Hope for sense of misery. Dawson was found dead on the 22nd of February 2014 when a real estate agent found her body when he arrived to inspect her Woolamaloo apartment. She had committed suicide as a result of the persistent cyberbullying. Ghost Adventures is an American paranormal and reality TV show which shows ghost hunters as they hunt ghosts, having been broadcast on the 17th of October 2008 until 2021 on Travel Channel. What the fuck does ghost hunting have to do with travel? Before moving to Discovery Plus in 2021. Among the ghost hunters were Mark and Debbie Constantino, a husband and wife duo who appeared from the first episode until 2014. Mark Constantino was born in 1962. Constantino was a paranormal investigator and an expert of electronic voice phenomenons, participating in two lockdowns on the show. Debbie Constantino was born in 1963 and was also an expert on electronic voice phenomenons. The pair had been married since 1989, however the pair had domestic abuse problems and had filed temporary protection orders against each other several times. In July 2012, Mark Constantino filed an order against his wife claiming that he was worried that she might stab him while she was intoxicated. A day later, he dropped the court order. In July 2015, he filed a second order, claiming that she tried to stab him with a knife after an argument over a credit card debt, leading a neighbour to call the police. However, Debra Constantino painted a different picture, and in August 2015, she filed for divorce, asking for a protective order, claiming that her husband and their 23-year-old daughter had been beating and strangling her to the point that she passed out. Debra Constantino claimed that he kept texting her, telling her to come back. She and a friend arrived at their daughter's apartment in Sparks, Nevada in August 2015, with a duo attacked by her daughter and Mark Constantino. Debra stated that Mark had ripped her out of her car, dragged her into the house like a rag doll, and then beat her and strangled her over and over again, dragging her from room to room. He threatened to slit her throat and stated that he was the devil. Police arrived and Mark Constantino was arrested with Debra Constantino, stating that if Reno police had not arrived, she would have been killed. Mark Constantino was arrested on suspicion of domestic battery by strangulation, first degree kidnapping, and first degree domestic battery. Paroled on the 22nd of September 2015, Deborah Constantino's roommate reported her missing. Police tracked the couple to their daughter's apartment in Sparks and found Mark Constantino at their daughter's apartment. When they knocked on the door, they heard gunfire and a man's voice telling them to stay away. A short time later, a single gunshot was heard inside of the apartment. Mark Constantino had murdered his wife in a murder-suicide. Secret Story is the French version of Big Brother and the second incarnation of a show in France following the unsuccessful Loft Story, which was broadcast on M6 on the 26th of April 2001 until the 4th of July 2002. In Secret Story, contestants have to keep a secret while trying to discover the other housemates' secrets. Secret Stories was broadcast on TF1 on the 23rd of June 2007, where it was broadcast for nine series before being broadcast on NF1, now 
known as TFX for its final two seasons. With the show finally airing on the 7th of December 2017, it was initially a huge rating success with the first season having a whopping 34.6% audience share before falling to a dismal 3.2% audience share by its 11th season. On the third season, which was broadcast on the 19th of June 2009, 20 housemates entered for 99 days. One of the participants was an eccentric and effeminate 20-year-old named Francois Xavier Logedan from Guadeloupe, with commissioning editor at TF1, Angela Lorente, describing him as a candidate known for his good humour, energy and originality. Logedan's secret was that he was a millionaire with the secret discovered on the 61st day. Logedan was one of three people evicted on the 92nd day. However, Logedan struggled to adjust to life outside the house and had to adjust to no longer being famous according to friends as society moved on and the series moved on. Logedan tried to release a pop single and launched a line of clothing but both flopped. Equally, TF uh, had barely any psychiatric support for contestants after they left, with contestant Martin Medus stating that the only thing he got was a letter three months after the series, stating that if he was unhappy to call a number. On the 10th of August 2011, Louis Dan walked onto a main road in Boer in western France. One car swerved around him to avoid him, before another car ran him over and killed him. TF Er insisted that his suicide was motivated by personal reasons, however, based on what his friend said, it's kind of doubtful. His mother sued Endemol, the producers of the show, on the 27th of August 2012, but I was unable to find any update on the lawsuit, and can only assume that it was unsuccessful. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is a spin-off of the Real Housewives franchise, having aired for 12 seasons since the 14th of October 2010 and broadcast on Bravo. It follows the personal and professional lives of several women living in or around Beverly Hills, California. One of those who participated was Taylor Armstrong, born Shanna Lynette Hughes and a native of Independence, Kansas. She moved from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Beverly Hills, California to start an e-commerce business. While there, she met Russell Armstrong, a local venture capitalist, at a local restaurant in Beverly Hills while the duo waited to be seated. The two married a year later and had a child, Kennedy Caroline Armstrong, born in 2006. However, Russell Armstrong was alleged to have been physically abusive to his wife, with allegations of domestic violence as well as financial issues. Additionally, Russell Armstrong hated being on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. The abuse led Taylor Armstrong to undergo reconstructive surgery for an orbital fracture after being hit by her husband. In July 2011, after filming the second season, Taylor Armstrong filed for divorce, citing verbal and physical abuse. On the 15th of August 2011, Russell Armstrong was found dead, having hanged himself at a home he rented on Mulholland Drive in Los Angeles County. First airing on the 6th of December 2010, Next Generation Baker featured contestants participating in challenges to create edible baking art and decorating it. Each week a contestant was eliminated, with the last contestant standing winning a grand prize, which for the first season was $50,000, and for the second, third and fourth season was $100,000. The show aired for four seasons and ended on the 19th of August 2014. It was broadcast on TLC. The second season featured 13 pastry chefs, with one Wesley Durden, a sergeant in the United States Army, aged 29, from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Durden had served two tours of Iraq since 2007 as 82nd Airborne Division. It was here that he had begun cooking with the Headquarters Support Company and the Headquarters Battalion. He was found dead on the 27th of October 2011 off Riley Road in Fayetteville, North Carolina, having shot himself. The reason why he committed suicide is unknown, however it is believed that he may have suffered from PTSD as a result of his army service. But TLC didn't tell their viewers until he was eliminated on the 19th of December 2011 with a memoriam at the end of the episode. TLC extends its deepest condolences to the family, friends and colleagues of Sergeant Wesley Durden who died on October 24. He will be warmly remembered by the cast and crew of Next Great Baker.
But why didn't TLC inform people that Durden had passed away? Well, they opted to delay informing viewers because they didn't want his death to overshadow the competition. This made fans of the show angry, noting that TLC should have rethought their priorities, and it made footage with Durden in it phenomenally eerie. Koalanta is the French version of Survivor and both one of the most successful versions of Survivor and one of the most successful TV shows in French history, frequently winning its time slot, having been on the air for 22 seasons and 7 special editions since the show began airing on the 4th of August 2001. It is broadcast on TF1. However, one season did not air at all. Season 13, which was filmed in Cambodia. Filming began on the 22nd of March 2013. Gerald Babin was a 25-year-old participating in the show and participated in a shipwreck challenge, which included a tug of war. However, after the group jumped from the boat and participated in the tug of war, Babin complained of cramps in his arms and was given medical attention by the show's physician, Fieri Costa, a 38-year-old who had worked with the show for four seasons. He was then airlifted by helicopter to a nearby hospital, suffering cardiac arrest during the transfer and passed away. This was the first death in any French reality TV show and caused a storm in both French and international media with a criminal case eventually opened in July 2013 but the investigation found no wrongdoing. Production company Adventure Line Productions and TF1 immediately cancelled the show and all contestants were returned to France. However, Costa was made a pariah by the French media, who criticised him, stating that he took too long to treat Babin, and the fact that Babin was interviewed on camera by Costa, despite appearing ill. Remaining in Cambodia, he committed suicide at a hotel in Cambodia on the 1st of April 2013. In his suicide note, he said that the accusations against him by the French media were unfair and unjust, with false accusations levered against him, as he had been sullied by the media, that his reputation had been destroyed, and that it would be unbearable to reconstruct his reputation. He insisted that he had, quote, treated Gerald Babin with respect as a patient and not as a contestant, and even though I regret this unhappy end, I acted in conformity with the Hippocratic Oath. He asked that his body be cremated with his ashes left in Cambodia and never returned to his native France. Adventure Line Productions were shocked by Costa's suicide and Adventure Line Productions stated, We have learned with dismay that Dr. Fieri Costa passed away in Cambodia. His high level of professionalism and humanity towards participants and production teams have always been unanimously recognised. In 2014, South Korean broadcaster SBS was filming a dating show named Jiak, which translates from Korean into mate in English. At the time, the show was labelled as similar to Big Brother, but could also be some bizarre combination of Love is Blind and The Bachelor. Contestants were housed in a guest house referred to as Love Town on Jeju. In the house, seven men and five women lived together, with cameras in every room except for the bathroom, with contestants wearing matching uniforms and facing off in various games and physical challenges to win a partner. Contestants were known to be bullied, including forced to eat meals alone when rejected by potential dates. Gion, whose first name was never released, was 29 years old and a participant on the show. Contestants noted that Gion was originally favoured by several men on the show near the start of a shoot, but a collective change of heart led them to pursue another contestant. Equally, Gion complained that producers were trying to portray her as an unpopular tragic type with numerous scenes filming her on her own to highlight the matched couples. Gion also called her mother and said that she felt ashamed of the way she would appear on Jiak and that she wouldn't be able to live in South Korea when the show aired. On the 6th of March 2014, Jiang hung herself in the bathroom of Love Town with a hairdryer cord, with the bathroom being the only room in the guest house with no camera. This was the night before the show was due to air on SBS. Her suicide note stated that she did not want to live anymore. SBS immediately cancelled the production of Jiak following extensive criticism by South Korean media, with producers and SBS blamed for the suicide of Jiang. The Bachelor franchise is debatably one of the most successful reality TV franchises in history, having been broadcast on ABC since the 25th of March 2002 for 27 seasons and even managed to survive its own share of controversy including allegations of racism and original host Chris Harrison leaving the franchise in 2021 after defending a white contestant Rachel Kirkenkull for attending an antebellum South themed formal event. 
The series sees a single bachelor woo romantic interests with interests eliminated every week with a marriage proposal during the final selection following a series of exotic dates. The infamous line, will you accept this rose, comes from the elimination process, with successful women accepting a rose from The Bachelor to stay to the next week, with fewer roses than women. Season 14 was filmed from the 16th of October 2009 until the 26th of November 2009, and was broadcast on the 4th of January 2010 until the 1st of March 2010, and featured pilot Jake Pavelka as The Bachelor, who was from Dallas, Texas. The first week, as always, saw 10 women leaving. One was 25-year-old Alexa McAllister from Galloway, Ohio. She was an entrepreneur working for a financial planning company. On the 13th of February 2016, she overdosed on prescription drugs with high blood medication, amlopidine, and acetaminophen in her system. Taken away in a stable condition to Grant Medical Center, her family took her off life support when her health began to deteriorate and she passed away on the 16th of February 2016. Pavelka stated on Twitter, I'm so sad to hear about Alexa, such a beautiful girl. My heart breaks for her family, covering them in prayer during this rough time. McAllister had struggled with depression and bipolar disorder. Whether it was type 1 or 2 bipolar was unclear. One contestant who had more success on the show was Gia Maria Alamand from Queens, New York. Born on the 20th of December 1983, Alamand appeared as a baby in ads for Johnson & Johnson as well as Gerber Baby. Pursuing a career in modelling in 2007, she was a swimsuit model in Maxim and moved to Long Island. Studying acting at Hartford College in 2011, she starred in the short movie Ghost Trick, The Kinsey Report followed by Ghost Trick, Goomer Body Snatchers, Mortuary Lockdown. Appearing in the 14th series of The Bachelor, she made it all the way to week 7 and was placed third in the series. This made her a minor celebrity and she featured on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, appearing on the 18th of February 2010, as well as a special edition of 2020 broadcast on ABC titled Inside The Bachelor, Stories Behind the Rose. She then featured on the first season of the spin-off The Bachelor Pad, where contestants in The Bachelor and The Bachelorette competed for a final cash prize of $250,000. She was eliminated on the third episode for refusing to participate in a kissing competition. In 2013, she moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, and dated NBA player Ryan Anderson, who was playing for the New Orleans Pelicans. However, she had premenstrual dysphoric disorder, a mood disorder characterized by emotional, cognitive, and physical symptoms that causes significant distress or impairment in menstruating women. By August 2013, her relationship with Anderson was on the rocks. On the afternoon of the 12th of August, she confronted Anderson over suspicions that he had been unfaithful to her and the pair argued over lunches. He then dropped her off at her apartment at around 6pm on the 12th of August and she told Anderson that she still loved him. Anderson looked at her and said, I don't love you anymore. Her mother, Donna Micheletti, called her and the line went silent. Alamand then hanged herself with a vacuum cleaner cord tying it to the handrail of a spiral staircase in her home. At around 7.28pm, Migletti texted Anderson, telling him that there was something wrong and to go and check on her daughter. Arriving at 7.48pm, he found her unresponsive, with police arriving at 7.56pm. Alive and taken to a hospital, she was taken off life support, having been pronounced brain dead on the 14th of August 2013. Her publicist, Penelope Jean Hayes, as well as her mother, were interviewed on Dr. Phil. The Bachelor spin-off series is called The Bachelorette, a similar presence but with eligible bachelors competing for a bachelorette, essentially a gender swap version of a bachelor, and has aired since the 8th of January 2003 on ABC. The fifth season saw 30 guys competing for 29-year-old Gillian Harris, the first Canadian bachelorette in the season, who finished in third place of season 13 of The Bachelor. She is from Peace River, Alberta, Canada. The series aired from the 30th of March until the 22nd of May 2009. One of those competing was 34-year-old Julianne Hug, a restaurateur of San Diego, California, an adventurous and freel-seeking individual. Surviving the first week, he was not given a rose on the second week and went back to his work as a restaurateur. 
However, unbeknownst to anyone, he had terrible depression. On the 3rd of November 2010, Hug committed suicide through a self-inflicted gunshot wound with his body found on a remote stretch of land off a highway in Southern California. In his suicide note addressed to his parents, he stated, I'm sorry to have to do this to you. I love you both tremendously. You two are the best parents. I've suffered depression for years. I feel awful and don't know how to cope. If life's not enjoyable, why stick around? Harris mourned his death on Twitter, stating, Please say a prayer for the loss of a friend this morning. Life is fragile. Don't forget to love the ones you love. It's very difficult to find the words to express my condolences, but I will always remember Julian's gentle demeanour and kind heart, which will be sadly missed. His father, Bertrand Hug, told USMagazine.com he was depressed and struggling and nobody knew. He couldn't find his way. Indeed, to all extents and purposes, with a girlfriend, Jennifer Bell, and a successful career, as a restaurateur, Hug seemed to have everything going for him. His funeral was held on the 12th of November at Village Church in Rancho Santa Fe, California, with hundreds in attendance. Storage Wars follows professional buyers who visit storage facilities throughout California and bid on those lockers and then they sell the goods. The season has been one of a and most successful shows, having aired since the 1st of December 2010. One of the buyers from season 2 to season 4 was Mark Balello, known as Rico Salve. However, Balello had been in trouble with the law. He was arrested and charged with three drug-related felonies in 2007, pleading guilty to one and serving 60 days in jail in 2009. Violating probation in 2011, he served 45 days in prison. On Sunday, the 10th of February 2013, he was arrested for a minor drug possession charge and being under the influence. Released from jail, he called his family terrified that he would go back to jail. His fiancée, Elizabeth Medzidis, spoke to him for four hours and when he seemed to be better, she left him overnight. On the 11th of February 2013, he was found in his car dead by his employee, having committed suicide through carbon monoxide. Hosted by Gordon Ramsay, MasterChef is a competitive American cooking show which has been broadcast on Fox since the 27th of July 2010. Based on the BBC UK series MasterChef, the show is filmed in Los Angeles, California, with chefs competing for $250,000, a MasterChef trophy, and in some cases, a cookbook deal. Season 3 was broadcast on Fox on the 4th of June 2012 until the 10th of September 2012. Josh Schmarks was a 24-year-old Army contract specialist from Jackson, Mississippi, and participated in the series. Initially eliminated in an episode broadcast on the 16th of July, he returned a week later and ended up being the runner-up, losing to 32-year-old Christine Ha, an MFA student from Houston, Texas. However, the gifted chef had his own personal demons. He had bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Whether it was type 1 or type 2, bipolar was unknown. On the 11th of October 2013, he committed suicide with a gunshot wound to the head in an alley on Chicago's south side and was found after a neighbour called to say that he was walking around with a gun. His lawyer, Lisa Butler, stated that his suicide was as a result of a lack of accessibility to intensive mental health treatment and easy access to guns. Gordon Ramsay and MasterChef executives paid respect to Marks, with Ramsay tweeting, Just heard the devastating news about Josh Marks. My thoughts are with his family and friends at this tragic time. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about one of the most famous reality TV stars in the history of the medium, Miriam Rivera, who, while ruled to have committed suicide, her untimely death was judged by her family and partner to have been a murder. So this one will be a bit murky. There's something about Miriam created what is probably the most famous and simultaneously controversial reality TV show, despite being a one-season wonder, and something that broadcaster Sky One would rather forget. The show was filmed in 2003 and featured six British men, Mark Domino, a 24-year-old obstetrician, Toby Green, a 23-year-old student, 22-year-old Aaron Lane, a chef, 23-year-old Tom Tuke, a lifeguard and ex-ski instructor, 22-year-old martial arts expert Scott Gibson, and 28-year-old Royal Marine Dominic Conway. Filmed in Ibiza, Spain, the men were wooing for 21-year-old Mexican model Miriam Rivera, with the winner getting to go on a holiday with 21-year-old Rivera and winning £10,000. Sounds like a normal Bachelorette-style TV show, right? Well, when Rook was chosen as the winner, Rivera revealed, I tried to be honest with all of you, not just some of you. Yes, I am from Mexico. 
I am a model and I'm 21, but Tom, I really love spending time with you and kissing you. You see, I love man and I love being a woman, but shh, quiet everybody, please, quiet. But you see, Tom, I am not a woman. I was born a man. And yes, I have and will continue to refer to Rivera as a woman. And if you're against that, then get fucked. Rook initially accepted the money and the trip with Rivera before rejecting both prizes before the airing of the show and all contestants engaged in a lawsuit which delayed the show from its original scheduled airing in November 2003 before the case was settled for an undisclosed amount. Sky One reported that all contestants refused to speak to Rivera after the show aired. The show was relatively successful in ratings with 970,000 people watching the final episode, a record for Sky One, and it aired in Poland in January 2005 on TVN, in Argentina on America TV in 2005, in the United States of America in 2005 on Fox Reality, and on Channel 10 in May 2004 in Australia. However, the show, which nearly 20 years later would be seen as promoting and exploiting Rivera and guilty of transphobia, was ridiculed in the media with the Age newspaper in Australia, stating that it was a new low for reality TV. However, Rivera became something of a celebrity, most notably in Australia, appearing on other Channel 10 shows including Good Morning Australia, Rove Live and Big Brother Australia, as well as Channel 7's TV Burp in 2009. However, Rivera's life was incredibly difficult. She moved to New York and was seriously injured in 2007 when she was thrown out of a third story window, leading her to pursue a more private life. Marrying Daniel Carrevo, she became active in Manhattan's ball culture and part of the House of Extravaganza. On the 5th of February 2019, Rivera was found dead in her apartment in Mexico. Mexican authorities insisted that Rivera had committed suicide by hanging. However, Correvo told the Daily Mail Australia that he had called her telling him that she was feeling sick and vomiting blood. He then received a threatening phone call after her death telling him not to go back to Mexico or prepare the funeral or he'd be killed, which led Correvo to believe that Rivera was murdered for refusing to become a prostitute. This was backed up by her friend, Jeanette Ortoff, who believed that she was killed for going against a human trafficking plot. Hence, this case is very murky and Variety labelled the death as mysterious circumstances. However, nothing has come to fruition. Her body was cremated and despite her husband's wishes, not returned to New York, with Mexican authorities still labelling Rivera's death as a suicide. Born on the 3rd of September 1997 in Yokohama, Kanagawa, Japan, Hana Kimura was the daughter of wrestler Kyoko Kimura, who separated from her father when she was one. The identity of her father was never released, however he is believed to have been of Indonesian descent. She was bullied in school for being mixed race. She won the DDT Ironman Heavy Metal Championship on the 21st of August 2005 in Tokyo. In the 2010s she trained at Wrestle One's Professional Wrestling University before debuting for promotion on the 30th of March 2016. In the same year she won the JWP Joshi Proseo Princess of Pro Wrestling Championship and JWP Junior Championship. Continuing to find success as a wrestler, she was ranked number 60 on the top 100 female wrestlers in the PWI Women's 100 in 2018. However, her success as a wrestler hid her underlying anxiety and mental health problems. She then joined reality TV show Terrace House Tokyo 2019-2020, to the fifth series of Terrace House. The show broadcast on Netflix by Netflix Japan and Fuji TV since the 12th of October 2012 shows six strangers, three men and three women from different walks of life who get to know each other and date each other living in a terrace house. The show internationally became a global sleeper hit and developed a cult following. In the fifth season, the house was in Satagaya, Tokyo, Japan. Fuji TV knew of Kimura's mental health difficulties, but staff in higher positions failed to share the information or discuss the matter. The show premiered on Netflix Japan on the 14th of May 2019. In April 2020, the production of the show was halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic before new episodes began airing in May 2020. Kimura was in 23 episodes from episode 20 until episode 42, which it turned out would be the last episode of Terrace House ever aired. 
In one episode filmed in January 2020, comedian Kai Edward Kobayashi, a contestant on Terrace House, got into a verbal argument with Kimura for damaging her wrestling attire. Kobayashi insisted the producers told him to slap her on the cheek during the show. When the episode aired in March 2020, she was subjected to relentless trolling, manifesting into name calling and racial abuse from social media users, sending her into a massive depression. Early in the morning of May 23, 2020, Kimura posted images on her Twitter and Instagram account of self-harm images while sharing some of the hate comments she received. Later that day, she committed suicide through hydrogen sulfide ingestion, with her death ruled a suicide in December 2020. The remainder of Terrace House Tokyo 2019-2020 would never air. The show was removed from Netflix Japan in mid-2020, and all episodes featuring Kimura were pulled on the 10th of August 2020. Fuji Television cancelled the season on the 27th of May 2020 in response to Kimura's suicide. In 2020, Kyoko Kimura filed a complaint with the Broadcast and Human Rights Committee of the Broadcasting Ethics and Program Improvement Organization. It was noted that the Terrace House had ethical problems. The third gravest conclusion on the scale that can be reached by the panel on a scale of 1 to 5. It was found that the show did not violate her human rights with Fuji Television taking action to protect her including providing mental health care before the show aired. However, there was inadequate consideration for cast's mental health and their well-being when deciding to air the January episode. However, Japan's cyberbullying laws at the time were piss weak. On the 15th of December 2020, an unnamed man was arrested in the Osaka prefecture, with the man aged in his mid-twenties. He stated to Japanese police that he couldn't forgive Kimura's attitude on the program, not obliged to face trial as online abuse was considered a minor offence in Japan at the time, he was ordered by the Tokyo Prosecutor's Office to pay a fine of 9,000 Japanese yen, just 81 US dollars. Kyoko Kimura filed a suit seeking damages of 20,000 US dollars from the man. However, this remains ongoing. On the 5th of April 2021, a second man in his late 30s was charged for online abuse said to Kimura, with the man based in Fukui Prefecture telling the Tokyo Metropolitan police that quote many hateful messages had been posted and I followed suit with the man simply joining in with what he saw others doing on her site on the 21st of January 2021 Kyoko Kimura filed a lawsuit with the Tokyo District Court seeking damages of around 2.94 million Japanese yen or 27,000 US dollars against a third man for causing emotional distress. The man was from Nagano Prefecture and had posted hateful messages about Kimura's suicide in May 2020. On the 19th of May 2021, the man was ordered to pay 1.29 million Japanese yen or 12,000 US dollars. It wasn't until the 14th of June 2022 that Japan's parliament passed a law in which online insults are punishable with one year in jail or a fine of three hundred thousand Japanese yen or about two thousand two hundred US dollars. This was in direct response to Kimura's suicide. On the 7th of December 2022, Kyoko Kimura sued the producers of Terrace House for 142 million Japanese yen or 1 million US dollars, claiming that the show was produced in a way that encouraged viewers to turn against her daughter, leading to her suicide, with her daughter treated as dispensable, noting, I wanted the producers to treat the cast members as human beings. The case remains ongoing. And finally, we have one show which is linked to more people taking their own lives in a reality TV show than any other reality TV show. Love Island. Love Island is a British dating show and has aired on ITV2 since the 7th of June 2015. As these contestants live in a specially constructed villa, coupling up to avoid being dumped from the villa, with the public voting on who will stay. The summer series is filmed in Mallorca, Spain, while the winter series is filmed in Cape Town, South Africa. It has enjoyed unprecedented and phenomenal success. In 2018, it became the most watched show on ITV2 in the channel's history, and in 2020 became the most watched show for 16 to 34 year olds. Sophie Graydon was born in Newcastle on the 25th of October 1985. In 2008 she won the title of Miss Newcastle, and in 2009 won the title of Miss Britain. She obtained a 2-1 honours degree in Media, Culture and Society from Northumbria University, and worked as a marketing manager. However, her seemingly perfect life masked her personal problems. In 2013 she was diagnosed with depression and low self-esteem, and took medication for social anxiety disorder. In 2000 
2016, she decided to participate on the second season of Love Island. She began a relationship with barman Tom Powell before hooking up with glamour model Katie Salomon with Graddon openly bisexual. She walked from the villa on day 39. By 2018, she became proactive in talking about the effects of cyberbullying and internet trolls, telling Radio Aire in March 2018 that following her experience of cyberbullying, after being on Love Island, quote, it was horrific. I think you get so many comments on the scale we did coming out to thousands of followers. There are fans and positive comments, but people would focus on the negatives. Sometimes I would look for it. There would be so many negative comments. They are commenting on the way you look, the way you talk. They would come up with an opinion of you on a TV show where they've watched you for 45 minutes. On the 20th of June 2018, she committed suicide at her parents' home in Medburn at the age of 32 by hanging. The body was found by her boyfriend Aaron Armstrong, an amateur boxer who tried to resuscitate her vis-a-vis -vis CPR for 15 minutes but was unsuccessful. Armstrong would kill himself 20 days after taking cocaine and drinking alcohol. He was 25 years old, while the cocaine and alcohol were judged to have inhibited his decision making, it is believed that his suicide resulted from Graydon's suicide. Mike Falasitas was born in Edmonton, London on the 19th of January 1993. A soccer player, he played as a striker initially for Stevenage and then played for various teams in the United Kingdom from 2011 until 2017, finishing with Margate. He also played in the Cyprus Under-19 and Under-21 teams in 2012 and 2013 respectively, being of Cypriot descent. In 2017, with his football career coming to an end, Felicitas participated in the third season of Love Island, entering the villa after the series began on the 15th of June 2017. He was dumped on the 21st of June 2017, having hooked up with Jessica Shears, who was previously with Chris Hughes. As a result, Felicitas earned the nickname Muggy Mike from Hughes. In 2018, he participated in the fourth season of Celebs Go Dating, broadcast on E4, which sees celebrities go on dates with members of the public. On the 15th of March 2019, he was found to have committed suicide by hanging in a park in Edmonton, North London. He had used cocaine and alcohol. Ethanol, antidepressants and paracetamol were also present in Felicitas' system. His final text message to an unnamed friend read, Mate, I don't think I'm going to see you anymore. I don't think I'm going to see you ever again. The final suicide related to Love Island was that of the show's former host, Caroline Flack. Flack was born on the 9th of November 1979. She began acting in 2002, starting with Channel 4's sketch show, Bo Selector, playing Michael Jackson's pet chimpanzee, Bubbles. From 2006 until 2008, she co-hosted children's entertainment program, Sam and Mark's TMI Friday, broadcast on BBC Two. In 2009, she co-hosted the second series of Gladiators, broadcast on Sky One. From 2009, she hosted various ITV2 shows, including I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Now, from 2009 until 2010, as well as The Extra Factor, from 2011 to 2013, and The X Factor, which was broadcast on ITV1 in 2015. She also won the 12th series of BBC One Strictly Come Dancing in 2014. In 2015, she began presenting Love Island on ITV2. On the 12th of December 2019, in the early morning hours, she was arrested for alleged assault following reports of a domestic incident towards her boyfriend, Lewis Burton, at their Islington flat in London. As a result, she was stood down from Love Island on the 17th of December 2019 in order to not distract from the upcoming series of Love Island. However, Flack struggled with mental health and, at a younger age, had attempted suicide, with TV producer Anna Blue stating, she just wasn't emotionally wired to deal with all the problems that came with being famous. On the 4th of March 2020, she was due to stand trial for the assault charges against Burton, having been released on bail on the 23rd of December 2019. On the 15th of February 2020, she committed suicide by hanging at her flat in Stoke Newington in London. So what have we learned from all of this? Can reality shows be blamed? Well, possibly for some. 
We've seen the candidates have to be vetted beforehand, and VH1 definitely failed with Ryan Jenkins on Megan Wants a Millionaire. They also should provide psychological support and counselling long term, and something akin to an assistance program before, during and after the show, particularly when it airs. As shown on Secret Story and Expedition Robinson, some shows don't do this, or make a weak effort of doing this, and contestants really need help in their rehabilitation in society. But as shown by the suicides of Dawson and Flack and Ferry Costa, this should also be extended to staff. This could also amount to physical protection, or at the very least the financial mechanisms to get some guards, as shown by Miriam Rivera, who was so scared after being attacked in New York and thrown out of a third story window that she didn't want to promote the show in the United States of America when it aired in 2005 and tried to live a private life. Support should also be extended to allow them to see family and friends or at least be in contact with them during the show, as seen by what took place on Pirate Master. They should also train contestants and reality stars and hosts on how to deal with social media and toxicity of cyber bullies and trolls so that we don't have another case of Sophie Graydon or Coco Kimura. But also, once they get off the show, allow them to get on with their lives. As shown by Najai Turpin on The Contender, don't allow them not to do their job and be bound by contractual conditions. And finally, if you have contestants who commit suicide during or shortly after filming, at the very least cancel the show or allow family and friends to be consulted before airing, as was the case with Nathan Clutter on Paradise Hotel or The Colony. Don't make the mistake of Wedlev Durden on The Next Baker or Sinisa Sibijak on Expedition Robinson in allowing the show to continue and leaving everyone dumbfounded. But maybe, just maybe, treat them as human beings rather than being mere contestants for viewers akin to a circus act with the ultimate aim of increasing avenue revenue and increasing network profit. That would be a good start. In the words of Koko Kimura, producers could treat cast members as human beings. Thank you for watching. This was a really hard video to make and I truly appreciate you for making it through to the end. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be informed of when new videos come out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day, and remember that truth is always more interesting than fiction. And don't forget, you are loved, and the world would be so much worse without you.